Good evening. This is a meeting of the Township Committee, March 21st, 2016. The notice requirements provided for in the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given by transmission to the Star Ledger, the Independent, and the Trooper Times, and by posting at the Middletown Township Municipal Building and filing with the Township Clerk all on January 7th, 2016. Committee Member Here. Yeah. Committee Woman Murray. Committee Member Senator Here. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Fury. Here. Mayor Sharpenberger. Here. Yeah. Please rise for pledge of allegiance. Activities in order to become better educated on the subject of 
autistic spectrum disorders. And now, can I say a few words? Of course, thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'll be really brief. My name is Marta Petricelli, and I am a member of the board at Oasis TLC. I am also the fundraising chair for Oasis TLC and the mother of a 16 year old boy with autism. Um, we were founded, I guess, about 10 years ago um, by a group of us parents with children with autism because you worry about what's going to happen to them in the future. On behalf of Oasis TLC, we would love to thank you, Mayor Schumpenberger, and the Township Committee. They have always, always been so supportive of us and helped us along in all this. We really would be able to do what we've been doing with these children without them. Um, I'm going to give you a very brief update on what we have been doing this past year since the last time we were here. Uh, we've introduced woodworking, ceramics, and a sewing program. We've expanded our organic garden. We have been farming the Stevenson Trap, which is out by um, West Front Street, by Front Street rather. Uh, we've been tending the goats and chickens, it is, it's a farm. And we've expanded our product line, which comes from the produce and the stuff that we grow there. And we've included goat soap, jams, eye pillows, woven bags, and a number of things that the children, well, the students themselves make, children. Um, we do have some upcoming events, and I have some flyers, and I'll leave some in the back in case any of you are joining us. On Earth Day, we'll be bowling in um, Hazlitt. Um, we have val various volunteer groups that anyone can come out and join us over at the farm and help out clearing trails or just clearing the land. Uh, we have a golf outing coming up in September, and we also have an annual dinner dance that we call our Green Wall at the Rumson Country Club October 15th. Uh, we also do, in April and May, we do a bi-monthly tease, it's like a Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock, where the students themselves will not only take your order, but will also be making the scones and the jams and everything that's to be served at the tea. And in the summer, we have Saturday breakfast at the house that, again, the students will be making and serving to you, taking your order, everything. This has been such a great thing for them to be able to communicate with, with the community, for everyone to come and see what they do here. Um, and I believe that's all. Our website, which is here, is www.oasistlc.org. So check it out for further information on the app. Thank you again.
time, I'd like to invite the division manager, Robert, e, uh, Robert R. Key, Jr., to please come forward, and President Gary Dennis.
anything, whether it's support for either 9 11 memorial or Middletown Day or any sort of thing that's a real Middletown community event, DNM is always there. And we want to recognize that. And we always do appreciate it. We're eternally thankful for all the support they've shown to us as community partners, not just a business and not just a consultant. So thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thing to do. Um, some of these volunteers make it look uh, very easy, and uh, 
just uh, extend my appreciation uh, uh, as a member of the, the governing body here that there are, there are people and volunteers like that that make, make the world a better place for uh, people that have difficulty helping themselves. So it's, uh, it, it, it's a tough thing to see, but it, it's a great thing to see. So that, that's uh, number one. Uh, number two, on a, on a lighter note, I did attend the um, Alliance for Action uh, Pancake Breakfast that I know the mayor will speak about. It was great, uh, great attendance uh, and good pancakes. And whenever I have an invite, for someone to make me breakfast and make my kids breakfast, just tell me what time to show up. Um, and uh, just uh, lastly, Mayor, um, this, uh, this uh, holiday, as this holiday weekend approaches us, uh, just uh, a note of, uh, to enjoy everyone's holiday from my family to yours. That's all I have tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Nassau. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to echo uh, Kennedy and Reno on our first proclamation. Um, where Officer speaks, uh, Officer speaks, and the phenomenal work that Tragic uh, Oasis does. Um, you know, one in, it's extraordinary to me that one in 45 children um, are diagnosed with autism down from one in 68 um, in New Jersey. And that is a, a frightening statistic, uh, but a reality that we have to deal with in New Jersey. Um, so I, you know, the, the work that this group does is extraordinary, um, and I just want to come in and thank them. Um, I also want to congratulate our proclamation to our uh, TNM, uh, congratulate them for uh, 50 years being here um, and the great job they do, and everyone to have a happy and uh, safe Easter this coming week. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the of Europe. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just to also, uh, just to reiterate what my colleagues have said about Impact Oasis, as you said, Mayor, uh, in your proclamation, um, I was fortunate enough to be on the governing body when, um, in the very early stages of my uh, career on the governing body, uh, to have the ability to uh, vote on that project, uh, the co-property, and uh, it is a, a wonderful thing to see what that organization has been able to do. and. Uh, to create a model for other organizations that are trying to uh, to work with uh, those who uh, have you know, have autism and have been affected by autism, and you know the true meaning of the proclamation, aside from our ability to recognize uh, the impact of Oasis, is you know to really take the month of April um, as Committeeman Nacelle and Committeeman Senator Reno had mentioned um, to be aware. You know autism and the, uh, the increasing prevalence of that. So I know we started a uh, we started a tradition here a few years ago, um, spearheaded. Um, probably goes back two or three or four years now, where we actually uh, light the town hall blue. If I'm not mistaken, correct, uh, Mr. Mercantante. So uh, I'm confident we will do that again here and, and in our other township facilities and. Uh, I hope that the residents of Middletown will take the opportunity, if they can, to um, to also uh, maybe do the same as, as we've seen and a little bit of an increase in that since we've uh, started that lead. The uh, other proclamation for TNM Associates, um, it is just a you know as, as my colleague said, it is a uh, a very great feat to be in business for 50 years and to to have a successful business and a Middletown-based business uh, for 50 years makes it even that much more special here in the township. And um, as the mayor said, TNM's contributions to this town go well, well above their professional service to this municipality, but not only through the, uh, their contributions to many of the, uh, the volunteers, many of our community service projects, I think today, they actually also granted two scholarships, one to Middletown North High School for a student and one for Middletown South High School for $2,000 each that uh, the high schools will choose somebody, uh, a student that is going to uh, follow in engineering, the STEM program, the sciences and engineering program. So just a, a great organization, uh, one that the township can be proud of and uh, hopefully we see many more businesses in Middletown for 50 years or a home, we hope to, to see 100 years of, of business here in Middletown for, for all of our businesses. So just uh, wanted to uh, mention that. 
And uh, on, on a much different note, we uh, the Arts Center has, has really taken, the Arts Council at the uh, Midtown Arts Center has really done a tremendous job in, in promoting the arts and promoting uh, their programs over there. And, and they've really taken, uh, do, are doing some really great things for fundraising for, for their program. And I know they recently had their most successful fundraiser, I think, uh, from a from a fundraiser perspective in their history uh, with a, a pocketbook bingo. Um, it was a, uh, an expensive proposition for the Fiore household, I can tell you, and probably many others, but uh, for a wonderful cause. So I um, just wanted to, to recognize the Arts Council for all the great work they're doing in fundraising. And finally, um, as we turn the page on this second day of spring and hopefully we turn the page from the wintry weather um, it's a good reminder that uh, the spring season is upon us which will also bring many children out into the neighborhoods many children out into our playing fields i know our dpw and uh, parks and rec are hard at work preparing the dozens and dozens and dozens of sports fields for their uh, for their use in the spring. And I just also would remind uh, all the residents to uh, just be very mindful of the, the children that will be playing outdoors and uh, be very mindful of the, uh, the driving and the speeding and uh, looking at our phones, which unfortunately we all probably have a bad habit of doing. So with that, Mayor, um, I thank you for the time this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, speaking of the art center, this past Saturday was the extravaganza, and as somebody whose kids have long run out of that, I just happened to be driving by on my way to office hours, and then I sat by afterwards, and I could hardly get a parking spot. I ended up having to park almost at the end of the um, of the train station parking lot. It was so crowded. What a turnout! And you know, you really get a sense of how valuable that art center is to the town here. We have some great athletic facilities. Not every young person may be athletically inclined, so to have a facility like this for them is really something, uh, something fantastic, and it's really gratifying to see it used so so heavily. Uh, so it really is is great, and it seems to be you know uh, getting more uh, spectacular every year with the programming as it as it goes along. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, the Alliance fundraiser that was mentioned earlier, uh, it really was wildly successful. I think we cleared $1,500 after all was said and done, which is really, uh, really very valuable. It's going to help us expand uh, treatment uh, options and programs. And there are several more uh, fundraisers scheduled, including a golf tournament, uh, September 19th, I believe. So uh, the, the Municipal Alliance has a, a new director who is really doing great things, has you know, a lot of energy and, and great vision, and uh, we're working very closely with her. And unfortunately, we lost a 24-year-old uh, Middletown uh, young woman to a heroin, heroin overdose on Thursday. And the saddest part, she was brought back from overdoses four times by Narcan previous, in the previous year. And you, you have to wonder, what kind of hold this this horrendous drug can have on you, where you get four chances at life and still go back to it? It's staggering. So uh, you know this this phenomenon that we're seeing in this country. It's not just Middletown, not even New Jersey. You hear about it all over. Uh, you, you don't know what the answer is. The treatment programs that we have here, we're, we're very aggressive. We have the Project Plus. For the fifth graders, we have the reaching out program for the high schoolers, and we have various programs, but we can only do so much. And the prevalence of heroin, and the police chief reminds me every time we talk about it, that it's so cheap, so inexpensive, that it's so easily easy to get, there's so much out there. And then you have to wonder, well, you know, what are we doing as a country? Why is there so much heroin flowing across the border, where it makes it into areas like Monmouth County and Middletown? So, you know, the town, while its, its efforts are commendable and, and certainly, uh, you know, very aggressive, we can only do so much. So unless they step up in the federal, uh, the federal level and really stop this nonsense with the border, uh, you can see more and more of this. Because there's just no way the police can keep up with the volume of, of narcotics 
that uh, are in, in the area here. And uh, you know, it's just really tragic. And if you see a picture of this young woman, she was stunning. To think that something a young life like that has been lost. So just absolutely tragic. I'm a little happy to know we're going to. We have uh, some of the veterans' sign dedication scheduled for April uh, 2. I believe it's April 9th and April 23rd. Uh, April 14th, okay. Uh, so uh, I think we have about 10 more signs to dedicate. And I believe, are the two Revel War people going to be in that one? We have two Rev Revolutionary War killed in action in Middletown, and the names have been submitted, so. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll be in the next wave, or, even, or at least the one after that. But uh, really, very special to recognize these brave uh, people who have done so much for us and giving us all that, all of this. And finally, how about that snowstorm last night? Huh? Boy, that's my kind of snowstorm. Where you wake up and it's all just about God. So hopefully, as uh, Debbie Mayor Fiore said, this is it. We can uh, those daffodils won't get shot once again. So with that, thank you very much and. Time for uh, public comment. And before we start the public comment, I just want to make uh, you know certain everybody knows. Please say, say your name and address, and keep your comments to five minutes to allow everyone who wants to speak uh, a chance. Okay? Any takers? Okay. All right. I have a quick vote, folks. So, uh, sure. Come on. Hi. Hi. Uh, you can go right up there. Yeah. 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 Just your name and address. Yeah. That's okay. My name is Mary Grant. I'm at 135 Lindy Lane in Lincroft. Um, and forgive me, I haven't been to a meeting in a while, so this question may have been answered at some point. Um, but I was reading in, I think it was a February journal or community magazine that Trinity um, All Girls Catholic School had found a new place and they would be moving out of Croydon Hall. So I am just wondering what you think may be moving into Croydon Hall and if anything that used to be in Croydon Hall would be moving back, i.e. like crossroads that took over the Old Lincroft Library, for instance, or if you have any other plans. I can answer part and I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Mervantante. Uh, the reason that Crossroads moved out of, of Croydon Hall, the McLeod Rice House is where they used to be, was not solely because of Trinity Hall. In fact, that was almost coincidental. That house has a lot of problems. Uh, you know, it, it needs a lot of repair. Uh, there's some asbestos problems. So we had to move everybody out of there for safety reasons. So it's not a matter of them now being able to move back. Until the house is remediated and you know stabilized, you won't be able to have any sort of regular activity in there until you know that's taken care of. So that's, I guess, to answer your question, no, they're not going to be going back uh, because of that. All right. So do you know what what, what does Croydon Hall become? Will it just be back to? What? I'm sorry. When you say Croydon Hall. Croydon Hall. Like, like what? Like the rice house or they, they, I'm just talking about. Is that what? Like, like, where is the? Where is Trinity? I'm assuming they're in Croydon Hall. Oh, in the recreation. Oh, the so will it go back to being a recreational facility? That Let's just start. Croydon Hall is the entire complex. That's the name of the entire complex. There's a classroom building, which is where Parks and Recreation used to be, which is where Trinity now is. Yeah, okay. So right. that building will be empty when they leave. The McLeod Rice House, there was an addition on that building where uh, Crossroads occupied. That entire building has been closed permanently until it's repaired. So nothing's going to go in there. So, so uh, Crossroads won't be back anytime soon. And the rest of the facility will remain a park and senior center, as it has always been. Okay. Um, and is it funding that I'm just finding money to fix that the old building? Is that because? Yeah. Uh, it's a tremendous expense to uh, run the air closing, so I don't see it happening every time in the near future. It will just remain closed. Okay, that's, that's it. That's all I was wondering. Great, thank you. Uh, would anybody else give us a vote? All right, I can get back out. Only kidding, yeah. Good evening, Heather Palala. 
79 Fairview Drive in Tim Falls. Um, quick question, I know that there was a county study done on uh, Route 520 between Early State and the Post Office, and I'm wondering if the reports have been finalized or any recommendations have been made to the township or if you've been in I don't know if we saw the, the, final, the final version. No, we heard about the study. We know the county was doing that study, but we haven't seen any, anything from that at all. Um, sure. Um, yeah, five minutes. Uh, you can run five, five minutes. Um, any intention of putting bike lanes in any of the sections in the middle of town? Bike lanes, you mean? On 520? Not on 520. Or just in general? In general. You, you know what? It, it's funny, and I deal with this a lot across the state and bike lanes it's you know sort of you know uh, a wish of a lot of municipalities but it's very difficult because you usually have an existing span you know that has to meet certain standards so you would have to acquire more you know more property this acquisition cost is engineering cost and typically you know capital programs don't have have the money for sort of you know, non essential type elements, uh, such as bike lanes. And some people may think they're, but you know, just to maintain and, you know, repair roads is a big ticket item, that, you know, for capital programs. The reason I ask is Brookdale Community College over in Lincoln very often has bike clubs that meet there, and they'll be coming down Swimming River Road in quite a large number. And residents of Lincoln have, have asked, is there, you know, any chance of a bike lane going in? We, um, we, we do, the only place we have bike lanes is in Port Monmouth where um, there's no street parking. Um, and the county, the county, when the county redid the roads in Port Monmouth probably 15 years ago, they included bike lanes on Port Monmouth Road, Church Street, and Broadway. Um, most of the township has a lot of street parking, so it doesn't work anywhere the street parking. But the bicycle lanes that you're talking about, they wouldn't use bicycle lanes. <laughs> They're, that they don't use bicycle lanes. Bicycle lanes are for people out first leisurely riding their bike. Mm -hmm. They're they're going to ride in the street, they do. and they're entitled to. So that, that's why, and they're very <coughs> clear that they're entitled to. So they, they don't they don't count bike lanes at all. If you have to do, they would use them. Yeah. And then uh, another note: uh, the four pond site. Uh, we said that it's cleared out. Um, any final word on? Yeah, I think the ground is broken, well broken, yeah. But they you know, it's a process, they have to remove the debris and then they'll start, with, you know, preparing the site for construction. But, you know, it's going important. Any relation to Middletown Road, Turnberry? There are some um, traffic calming measures that they were supposed to do on Middletown Road Road and Turnberry, I believe. Um, that's part of it. And including uh, some pedestrian um, uh, flashers uh, on Middletown and Grove Road for the school students there. Um, were those in the final plans? It, it, it was in the resolution. The resolution. Yeah. We'll go back to that. Yeah. I mean, they didn't specify what they would be. They, they indicated that they would do things that were um, agreed to by the traffic department and the engineering department. So they've been meeting to come up with it. No, no,
you know what, while I have, to, while I have a minute, I'll just commend you, you folks on the job that you've been doing. As a, you know, I, I mean, the, the communication and the response out of JCPNL has been absolutely tremendous. And uh, the alerts that we get with this power outage, you know, there's a uh, cruise and route, just that sort of information is worth its weight in gold to be able to communicate and keep people aware of what's happening. And power outages are, you know, an unfortunate inevitability in life, you know, especially around here. But that kind of communication takes all the same, most of the same out of it for most folks. And we hear about it too. You, know, you hear about it from residents, like, hey, gee, you know, the power, they came really quickly, they're very responsive. So that's something that you should hear publicly from us, you know, because you hear the other side when things don't go so, so great, you know, so that really is uh, something to be very, you know, it's very commendable. That, and if I can add, Mayor, um, I think we're, and I appreciate, we, we all appreciate you coming in and asking that question, checking with us. Uh, unfortunately for you, we know where to find you in case uh, there are problems. <laughs> but uh, look, I probably can say when I was mayor during those two hurricanes, Irene and, and Sandy, that um, you know, unfortunately, I, I probably was one of the bigger outspoken critics to JCPNL at the time for a number of reasons because I felt at the time that there was not a lot of communication with the municipality and that there were a lot of needs that mayors felt would enhance communication not only with the municipality but with your end users. And I have to say that I have been thoroughly impressed with pretty much everything that when Mike Scudero, the mayor of Tinton Falls and myself, you know, hosted a, a forum of the local mayors post Sandy. Um, I, I think the communication, the, the, the ideas that maybe you took and maybe you didn't take and, and maybe enhanced and, and on some of those things have been tremendous. And uh, just the communication from the website app to the uh, to we see the tree cutting. I mean, uh, I've seen more uh, brush and, and, and tree limb removal in the last three years than I probably did in the previous ten being in the town. So I think it's uh, it's a testament to what uh, JCPNL and First Energy are doing to uh, enhance their infrastructure. And um, as a not only a governing body official but also a resident and uh, ratepayer. I appreciate those capital investments because we, we know that they needed to come a long way and I'm sure there's still a long way to go, but we appreciate you. Hey. Does that answer your question, Kieran? <laughs> yeah, that's all. You know, great job and then pass that on to the, yeah. the folks back in the office, really. We would really do appreciate it. Okay, is there anybody else who would care to speak? All right, going once, going twice. To the movement, Alice. Yep. Uh, motion to close. Seeing no further members of the public come forward, move to close the public portion and move for adjournment. Second. Committee member Sutton. Yes. Committee member Sutton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Yes. Mayor Shepard. Yes. yes.